The winds that come through my place here in Hobart are legendary. Everything is so exposed here, especially from the southerlies and the westerlies that can really rip through and smash things around. And that's why the natural screening and barriers provided by windbreaks are so important to make sure the plants in my garden can survive and thrive. A windbreak is basically a row or screen of plants that functions to protect other plants or garden sections from strong winds. It could be a large tract of trees, a bushy hedge, or even a row of pots strategically placed to buffer winds. In a productive garden like mine, a shrubby windbreak has many benefits. It's much better than building a solid wall because it filters wind rather than blocking it, which would just redirect it, possibly creating a wind tunnel on one side. A shrubby windbreak can create a warmer microclimate to help your veggies along in the cooler months, and a cooler microclimate if it blocks the hot sun in warmer months. And an added bonus is that it brings more plants into your garden, which brings more habitat and food to attract beneficial wildlife and pollinators. One of my favourite plants to use as a windbreak is the sticky hopbush. This one will get to around four or five metres in good soils, but I like to keep it around two metres to make sure it's easy to manage. Native shrubs like the hopbush are ideal for small garden windbreaks like this one. They're easy to prune to shape, they can be very tough once established, and are easy to propagate to grow more plants if you need them. Other examples of natives that are great for windbreaks include Westringia, tea trees, acacias, saltbush, and eremophilas that have a dense form. Non-natives include English lavender, fatinias, teucrium, rosemary, and fajoas. Pick the species to suit your site conditions, the height needed to protect the site, and how strong the wind is they're up against. When it comes to creating the ideal windbreak, I've certainly learned a few things along the way. For starters, I planted these ones around two metres apart. This is ideal for letting the plants grow large and not having to compete too much for space and resources, but it took a long time for the gaps to fill and merge into a dense windbreak. In hindsight, one metre would have been much better. I was also tempted to plant lots of salvias beneath the sticky hot bush to get more plants faster. But unsurprisingly, things got pretty crowded really quickly with two different types of plants put so closely together. These days, I keep the salvia low because I want to encourage a clear head shape. I strongly suggest being patient and to just wait for the hedge to grow. Also, give the plants some space to breathe. They're already competing with each other, so be careful about adding more plants to the mix. Recently, one of our hot bushes died for no apparent reason. And look, I was pretty sad about it for a while, but now I'm getting on with it. I've got a new hot bush seedling, can pop it in, and in a few years time, it'll catch up with the rest of the hedge. If wind is a challenge at your place, plant a shrubby windbreak. Not only will it look great, but it'll also protect your productive patch. And most importantly, it gives you another good reason to put more plants into your garden.